So we're here at the site of Talati de Dolt. So this is an ancient cave here at this amazing site. This was here before the rest of the site, apparently. And you can just see this, it's like a natural cave. It looks amazing. You can go all the way in. It looks like it's rough hewn. It's not absolutely carved or anything like many of the caves we find in Sardinia and Malta and Hypogeums, but still pretty amazing. And the dead would have been buried in these areas here. They've lit it up for us there. So this is probably why the site was chosen. It was this particular cave. And I can just feel like the sense of peace in here. It's quite amazing. I wonder if this is why it was chosen. This site was built here. I thought it believed it was a sacred burial place or a sacred site or a way into the underworld. And this could be that. And it could also be because um, you don't get any kind of interference with energies here. So there's a real natural kind of pristine energy which you often find in these caves or hypogeums. So here we have a square cut monolith. And this looks like it's got a hole carved right through it. You can just see that here. And that's been cut through quite carefully. You can just see the light on the other side of that. Just about. Suggesting this is like deliberately cut. Could have been to pull the stone. It could be astronomical orientation or alignments or shadows. There's another one of these up here. We're gonna find in a moment. But up there is where I'm most interested in. This is where the amazing T-shaped pillars. So this is the famous whole stone like the Menantol or the Mitchell Hampton stone in England. And behind it over here, we have the famous pillars. And here was one of the Taolus. These are incredible T-shaped pillars, very much in the style of um, what we find in Gobekli Tepe. But these are made of two stones, with one resting on top. And it kind of means table. And so these were much later. These were nowhere near as old as we find in Gobekli Tepe, several thousand years later. Although, could it be that the actual style was transferred by different cultures through Turkey, through the Mediterranean and other places and it ended up here. So we have like a circular enclosure here with the great men here, T-shaped pillar, Taula. And this is very similar to what we find at Gebekli Tepe. It's quite bizarre. And you can see the wall here that kind of holds the stones together, holds them up with these great thin pillars marking the circle and then we have the great tower right in the center uh, look at the size of this this these is like uh, this is the tower this is like the the big t-shaped pillars maybe two stones it means table and it's all limestone and this one's kind of toppled over but this is also one as well with the smaller smaller uh, cap piece on top you can see the way that these megaliths with this wall is very similar to Gigantia, or Gigantia in Malta and Gozo, where we have the limestone blocks in circular arrangements with walls between them. This is at least what, 12 foot tall. So 12 foot tall, probably 10 foot, eight foot wide pillar with a piece on top. This is probably what, 50 tons? That's probably like 30 tons on top. So this is very impressive megalithic construction. And we know it was done in the Bronze Age, definitely no earlier, but with the caves we saw below at this site, it could suggest there was an earlier habitation here at least. I wonder if there are connections with Sardinia because we do find a very similar style, but even Gebekli Tepe it really it is really getting to me, the sort of style of enclosure. Is it a memory of Gebekli Tepe from Southeast Turkey, even though it's thousands of years later? 
It's also thought that these towelers were actually a place of like ritual, even sacrifice, and to kind of enrich the fertility of the landscape. Now this kind of interests me because I wonder if there's a piezoelectric effect and I wonder if the caves here and the underground water and the type of rock and the geology here is actually chosen because it has this powerful fertility effect on the landscape because it's an incredibly fertile fertile area. Today it's renowned for how fertile it is because of the type of geology. And I wonder if the rituals that were done here were a memory of what was done before, passed on by multiple generations of an elite who sailed the Mediterranean and before that came south, came down south from the area of southeast Turkey. And I wonder if there's a link with the Pelasgians and also the Etruscans of Italy, because again, we're finding a similar type of construction in many of the sites. Now, one of the things that gets me about these sites is like it's almost like a combination of styles. We have the caves, which are kind of potentially natural. They may have been carved out. We have the towers, what they call watch towers, really. That's what it translates as. But these are megalithic, especially at the base. Some of them you can go in, some you can't. So they have similarities to the Naraji of Sardinia. And then we have these incredible pillars. These are just unique in the whole of Europe. They've been compared to Stonehenge obviously because uprights, clean cut uprights kind of squared off with the lintels but they're not exactly the same obviously. But um, this is just blow my mind just being here. We're going to go, there's apparently about 13 or 16 or so of these particular constructions. So I'm just heading up to one of the Taleots, I think is how you say it. Now you can just see if I just show you behind me here. So this is this is the structure here. Now if you've been to Sardinia, you'll know this is very similar to Naraji. But these tailots, these are different. These are potentially from the same era, so it's kind of strange. Some of them have interior chambers, some had corbelled roofs, some don't. So they're not exactly like you have some ship-shaped ones, or upside down ships anyway, which could be a recognition of going into the underworld after all the sailing and navigating that the ancient Bronze Age people did. But these have cyclopean blocks, especially on the lower levels, and they get smaller uh, as you go up. It's all dry stone walling. It's a very, very good way of building. Using the local limestone, it looks like Malta. It's the same kind of rock as Malta we find all over that island, although it's known that that's much, much earlier. But there is some suggestions that it could be much earlier dating in Menorca than previously thought. So let's go up and take a closer look. Got an amazing view of the island in all directions as well as the towler over there so i wonder if these were like astronomical observation towers and these were the, the correct height to get a nice clear flat horizon in all directions and it said that the the towelers the t-shaped pillars were actually to create a false horizon much like we find at the recumbent stone circles in Aberdeenshire, Scotland. So then the moon would roll across the top or the shadows would create certain effects so you can mark the turnings of the seasons and the times of the year. So we have another stone with a hole in it here and this looks like it's chiseled or carved out this stone. Some of, there are some kind of quite nicely cut stones up on the top of this Talio Tower, Taliot Tower. It almost looks like it's some kind of it does look like an astronomical tower, much like the Naraji's potentially were, or the Chulpas in ancient Peru. So there are about, so there are about 300 of these towers in Menorca. Now remember, Menorca is an extremely small country. There's in Sardinia, there's something like seven or eight thousand Naraji's. Now these were much more widespread, much more common over there, but it's a very similar design. And some of the stonework here. It does suggest these Mediterranean islands were, were not cut off from each other. They were sailing around each other, trading, sharing knowledge, sharing their wisdom. These elite megalith builders. It's very rich, fertile land here, this limestone kind of rock that it grows in the soil. 
and so you know today's farmers these are all an inconvenience these rocks but in ancient times they were part of the fertility system of the entire ancient country so just in here is some living quarters with one of these uh, tellos in there and you can see some of the megalithic blocks just on the outside here but let's go in here and take a closer look see more carved stones with a uh, looks like a hole cut out of it so these are kind of like caves stroke dolmen stroke megaliths you can just see that in here in the interior of one of these very interesting similar to what we find at Gigantia in Gozo more so-called living quarters here with huge monolithic blocks as lintels and yeah you have to crouch down a bit certainly weren't giants in here so we have a kind of almost like a temple in here with a toweler inside here and you can just about make out it's almost like a, a circular enclosure like we saw at the main part of the site huge lintel over the door but this is very intriguing it's like an indoor tula it goes even deeper the cave all the way down there but this is what i'm here for this is like sacred precinct and interior like a mix between the cave and the main outdoor temple some suggestions that the main temple area with the tower also had a roof on it but they've kind of disproven that now but it's fascinating there's one inside here actually inside the so-called living quarters but i believe this is more of a ceremonial space where hallucinogens and other shamanic medicines and rituals took place this is a very very beautiful energy in here with this incredible central pillar like the omphalos of the culture of the tribe who existed here back in the bronze age and it continues <coughs> it continues all the way down here we have more chambers interior areas not dissimilar to some of the tombs the giants tombs in sardinia with niches in the sides again another hold stone many of these around i wonder if these have any astronomical significance this is a very large block just in the middle of this enclosure mixed with the caves and the towers very beautiful and this is heading back out we can see more of these caves and what looks like another towel or a couple of them inside this goes on forever we have here at the entrance what looks like a libation table you can just see that here some kind of liquid was kept in here probably then taken in to the sacred precinct so this is supposedly a kind of house that was built after the main megalithic bronze age site here but you can see it looks like a dolmen it's got lintels going across the top uprights almost like a chamber but this is actually supposedly living quarters for the elite probably the megalith builders or the later ancestors of them who actually lived here at this site so this chamber here dates in between the 4th and 2nd millennium BC and also look you have the towelers here there's a couple here on the side this was definitely a design spec of these megalith builders from the bronze age and you can see the similarities to some of the chambers we see in Malta and Sardinia and other such places and here we have the kind of precinct like the living area next to it then behind we have the great towers in the distance and the towers and the caves and other such things surrounding it so this was a very prominent very busy area back in the bronze age all the way up to around the time of christ mm -hmm.